Hey everyone, welcome to my Fluid Art channel. My name is Rhonda Robson and I'm a fluid artist in the middle of the United States of America in Sioux City, Iowa. Today we're gonna do two blooms and those blooms I'm gonna make skins, paint skins, and then I'm gonna take glass and put them on top of those paint skins. I'm going to then cut them out and make magnets. I'm gonna show you the steps two through 10 at the very end, but let's start with bloom number one. All right, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna put down what we call the base paint or pillow paint. It's Sherwin-Williams Semi-Gloss Ultra White is the one that I'm gonna do. And you can see my husband pointing to some um, colors over there. He is actually picking the colors for this one. So the paint colors that we use are three parts Sherwin-Williams to two parts polyacrylic and then I take that paint mix and I add it to the paint color that I'm going to have. So you can see I have a whole bunch off to the side ready to go. So when I'm ready to make my art, I have them ready to go. All right, so my husband picked purple here as the last one. So we're gonna put that one in. And the paint is a nice medium thickness. So the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna wanna put down your cell activator. My cell activator is four parts Australian Floetrol to one part paint. And you put that in the center or wherever you're gonna put that. Today I'm putting it in the center. And then you're gonna blow down and then across the paint. So you use the pillow as a way to bounce back up. And so the paints go down and then they come back up. And so you can kind of see how I just blow and then I turn it and then I blow some more. And then if I have a lot of white, I go straight down. I puff it down and then you can kind of see those cells start to activate. Here's where I start to decide how I want this to look and allow the paint to come back into the center where I blew my air at. And sometimes you have a lot more white, so I just go straight back in, down, maybe out a little bit, but more down. And it's a little less of a puff. It, it, you can do some you know, really strength when you blow down, but sometimes then you get to the pillow paint and you have that white that comes up and really you want the colors to mix and create those cells. So right now you can kind of see that they're coming back into the center, but I'm, I'm deciding if I want to use my skewer now or if I need to puff a little bit more on the white. So I'm going to do that first, just a little, a little bit of puff and then just allow those cells to form allowing the paint to come back into the center. I'm again deciding, do I take my skewer or do I go down again and puff? So you can see, obviously, I'm going down and doing that. All right, so I decided to go ahead and try to pop some air bubbles. I noticed that maybe that would bring up some cells. Uh, it really doesn't very often um, for the blooms, uh, but you know, try it and see. Just don't over torch it. So now I'm gonna take my skewer and I'm just gonna go through and do kind of little squirrelies throughout. It just makes it so cool the designs when you do that sometimes. And sometimes you have too much yellow and you wanna get some blue in there or maybe you've got too much white and you wanna get some of the blue and green into it. Anyway, it's really kind of helping you to create a little bit more of a better composition um, in your art piece. Now granted, these are tiles and I'm making small art with this, but still you want your composition to look cool. You know, I've got a little bit of extra white in there with that purple. And so on this one, you're going to see how I, you know, I like it, but it's just not enough purple in certain areas. So um, I'm not going to use the purple when I do my magnets. Uh, 
This is really pretty with the blue and the green and the yellow. So those were um, three colors. The purple I like in there too. It adds a little bit of dimension, but I really like that blue and that green. Don't put your thumb there. I'm going to get it cut. I'm not careful. That's from the old paint. I'm going to... I'm just going to go on top. Dang, man. Just take your time to, I'm trying to go fast for you guys. Just take your time and you won't have those edges. I'm going to do more of a straight cut next time. I'll show you what I mean by straight cut. So see, I've got some of this could have been good paint could have used but I'm gonna do a straight like go down straight like that all right so step number three I'm just gonna show you a few that I put down I've decided I'm just gonna use the yellow blue and green uh, to put this down but I just put one drop of Liquitex medium and I'll show you at the end even more in depth on how to do this. Since we just did this bloom, I wanted to show it to you and show you where I put it, I, where I put it, it, where I put the glass pieces on the skin and, and how I kind of um, adjusted that a little bit too. But again, I'll show you this in more in depth and I'll talk through it and explain it better at the end if you want to watch that. So steps through through two through six will be done then. So I'll have a complete demonstration and explanation of steps two through six later on in the video. All right, so bloom number two. Again, we're gonna put down our pillow paint and that Sherwin-Williams Semi-Gloss Ultra White. And I wanna make sure that I put a thick enough pillow so that you get that bounce effect. And I mean bounce like when you blow down, the cells bounce back up um, as you're doing that. My paint mix is three parts Sherwin-Williams Base C to two parts polyacrylic. I've decided on this one I'm going to do fall colors, which are really cool. And then I take that paint mix and I do a one-to-one -one ratio of paint to paint mix. And I stir that up really good. And if it happens to be too thick, then I'll add some more polyacrylic. So yeah, so I put that brown on there. And then this one was a fluorescent orange. And then the next color that I'm gonna put down is um, a kind of a deep red. And then this was kind of a cool color. It's like an apple green, uh, apple green, green apple yellow kind of color. Anyway, it is a shift color and it's kind of in the between green and yellow. So that looks really cool on there too. It just kind of adds a little bit more of that fall color. And then let's put a little bit of this um, neon yellow on there just to kind of give it a little bit of punch. The next thing you're going to put down is your cell activator again. My cell activator for this one in particular was four parts Australian Floetrol to one part Amsterdam paint. And then you blow down and across the paint. So see how that just the cells that comes up and this is such a pretty color pretty fall colors today is a fall day although right now it feels i think it's 85 outside as i'm doing this and it's just gorgeous and i've got the windows open um, but this fall color is so pretty So we've already had a frost, but um, so most of our leaves are gone. But there's a few that have this red color out there. 
So see how it bounces and comes back into the center? That's what I'm waiting for right now is to allow the paint to kind of bounce back together, come together instead of having that indent into the paint. So taking your skewer or anything that you want, um, you can make any design. I made this little curly cue in the center. I end up not liking the curly cue in the center, um, just the way it came and spun out. But it it doesn't look bad there. It actually looks pretty good. <laughs> so you're seeing me spin this out, and uh, that's so that the weight of the paint goes out consistently consistently to all sides of the um, tile. If you stretched it, it would only go whatever direction was with gravity. So you use the centrifugal force of um, spinning it and then that helps get the weight of the paint out. Yeah, so see, I didn't like that center. I don't like the center, you can kind of see that. Kind of made a little bit more of a squiggly than I really wanted. Almost, it's not defined enough, so there must have been it too much paint someplace else. Okay, one more. And then I will show you all the final results here all together from my last weekend's bloom testing. I shouldn't say testing, but just having fun for Christmas. <clears throat> I always have a lot of people who ask that they can't get it off their tiles. Maybe it's because, again, it's not glossy or maybe they didn't use the correct, or not correct, I shouldn't say correct, or a type of paint that will come off easily. So another thing you can do, which I will do if I can't get this these edges off, is you soak your tiles in warm water. and then try to peel them off. It seems to work really well if you do that. So, so here are all my tiles, all my skins now, ready to go for what I'm gonna do next. All right, so step number three is um, putting the glass pieces on the skin, and I take one drop of liquid Liquitex medium and I put it on the glass and then I press it down where I think it's going to look and if I don't like it then I slide it to wherever I want it to be and then even though I've already pushed down you kind of saw me I was pushing down a second time down there because it pushes the Liquitex out and it's okay if it bunches up next to the side that comes off so don't worry about it and I use Liquitex specifically because it comes off my hands very easily you can use diamond glaze um, I've done it before but it's kind of more like um, oh so um, now I'm going to show you that steps feeling two through if you get six, it on your hands very so, detailed uh, I tend not um, to so stay use gloves for that. when thanks I'm for doing this because it's easier to hold the pieces of glass so anyway, there they are. So here's the end results for the magnets. I will make sure that you have steps through six in much more detail next, so stay tuned for that. All right, so next step is to peel the paint. So let's get that started. Hey everyone, all right, well, I'm gonna show you what I do with my tiles um, to make skins out of the blooms that I did. So I use um, an X-Acto knife um, or straight edge, whatever you wanna call this, um, box cutter, I that's all the same uh, in my mind. <laughs> I call it an X-Acto knife. Uh, it's not an X-Acto knife, but that's what they're called. Uh, that's what I call them. 
Um, <clears throat> but these are um, my blooms that I am going to peel the skins off of these. And I use them for all kinds of things. I use them for wine glasses on the bottom so you can see them from the top and then the bottoms. I use them for uh, medallions. Here's a couple of them that I have. And um, even like golf tags, like this could be like a golf tag to put on your golf bag. Um, I use them for magnets. Here's some magnets that I have. Um, and I've got some really cool sizes of magnets um, for later for this group. I actually have square uh, magnets, uh, which are really cool. So what I what you can do with skins, oh, and I use them for jewelry. So these are just, I don't know, just some of the jewelry pieces that I've done. And what is really neat is when you don't like something, like that would look cool on a magnet, right? So if you can't use this whole skin for maybe a wine glass or, or something else, you can definitely use them for magnets or other smaller pieces of art. So today we're gonna, I'm gonna teach you how to take them off of these tiles. Now the key to taking them off the tiles is two, two things. One, you need a glossy surface of the tile. These are some that I've used over and over again. But you need a glossy surface on the tile. And, um, and they, do, they do tend to stick together if you're um, putting on top of each other. That's the reason why I tilt them um, side to side. So like I go like that when I'm putting them on top of each other. But they're nice and shiny. And then the paint that I use for the underneath is a semi-gloss white. And I think the combination of the semi-gloss white paint and then the glossy tile sure helps the fact that these peel off really easily. So the one thing you can kind of see is I don't put them on top of each other. I was doing that on this one because my paint here will stick to this paint here. So I'm going to show you using a piece of paper over top of them. So I'll do all of these eventually, but um, this actually is hopefully um, for my son. He loves orange and blue, so I've got a couple of those for him. But I take the knife, whatever knife you're using, and I start in a corner. I keep my hands out of the side, and I just start in a corner and I slide the straight edge down the corner. I turn it and I do, whoops, I went off the side there. The other corner, corner to corner, corner to corner. And then the last one, oh yeah, I already, did I already do this side? Nope, I didn't. <laughs> Just going everywhere. It, this right here is underneath is jaggedy and so I'm not doing a very straight job. So. And then I just take my corner and then, okay, that one I need to cut to there. Take the corner and I start peeling. And if it got, gets kind of hard, I go to the sides to each corner and I peel it off. And that's how simple it is. Now, from here, you don't want to pile a bunch of these on top of each other. Remember how I said these stick? So let me show you what I do is I actually take my paint skins and I put them in between like this. Okay, and so I just put uh, paper towels or you can use paper, whatever works, but I use paper towels and it works really nicely. These ones are kind of in a mess right now. Um, but anyway, I, I save my paint skins for the next time I need them for somebody else. So. So there's one paint skin, and I'm just going to keep going with these groups. Now, one of the things that I do have is I keep the on the edges here, you can kind of see there's paint. I can go back, and I, well, I'll, I'll use the other knife since I was using it. I can go back and I can scrape this off pretty easily. So it just peels off just like it does on the top. Now on the sides it gets a little bit of the roughness and so it's a little harder. So I just reuse them over and over again. They don't, I don't need to get them clean. They don't have to be clean because I elevate the bottom. 
so it's not on this. So the drips just kind of fall down to the surface that it's drying on because I have uh, little caps that I put underneath these to hold them up to dry. All right, so I'm just going to continue on and do these other paint skins. So there's the first one. We'll just do one at a time. But what I'm going to do is, let's see, I really like to use this surface here, keeping your fingers out of the way. first be careful of the knives that you're using and it's just that easy so it's this white paint and this glossy that really I think makes a difference so there's my paint skin and it can go off to the side and then like I said on these I just alternate them like that because they, they will stick and it'll take a little bit to pry them off but anyway okay the next step is to decide where you want to glue the glass on. All right, everyone, we're gonna take these paint skins, and what I mean by paint skins is that they are actually that, paint skins, and we're gonna take those and we're going to make magnets or these little itty bitty cute little rings to put on your wine glass. Okay, I am not making wine glasses out of these. I'm making little decorative art. So, um, but we'll have these little cute little guys go on here and then they'll have a little ring and it'll go on the glass. So these paint skins, what I wanna do is I wanna take these um, glass pieces and I wanna glue them down to an area that would be really pretty for them. And I'm gonna use these ones that I have made last weekend. And how I glue them down typically is I use Liquitex Gloss Medium. It just works really well for me. Um, it's, it doesn't hardly ever have air bubbles. I just press it down and it's there and it works really good. And then for the backs or for the metal portion, uh, what we'll do for these, and so I glue then the, after I cut it out, then I glue the piece down with this diamond glaze. Now, you can also use the diamond glaze for this. I tend to not because it's super sticky and it gets on my hands and then um, it's hard to get off. So I just use it for it to take the glass and put it on the metal. And then I use the Liquitex medium and that actually comes off really nicely off my hands. All right, so we're gonna get started. So I think I am definitely going to be doing the square magnets for my boys. So I'm definitely going to be putting these on the blue and the orange for Blake. And I usually do this, I usually get it so I know about where I'm going to place everything. Looks pretty good. Okay. All right, so next step is actually gluing the glass on the paint skins. Just one drop and then I put it on there and then I squish it out, okay? 
That way it gets all the bubbles out and it gets it all the way to the edge. And it's fine if it builds up on the edge. Don't worry about that. No big deal. And I'll show you why when it dries. And if you don't like it where it was at, you just slide it to another no new location, right? So don't lift it up and try to remove it. Just slide it. Yeah, I just it just works better. seem to do this very well today. Make sure you're on the paint skin. And see how you've got the um, the I don't know a glue coming out the sides. That's okay. And then just push down on everyone. And tomorrow I'll be able to cut this out, and I will be able to use this extra some other time too as well. to do it fast and we're just going to do it the way I normally do it not do too fast for you so you can see how I do it and everybody's got their own little tricks of what works for them I'm just kind of showing you and I keep paper towel so I can get it off my fingers easily you can use gloves if you want I just figure well I just don't. <laughs> One last thing I have to throw away. I guess I have to throw away the paper towel, don't I? Too funny. I just kind of wiggle it until it's in place and it squirts out all around all corners so it doesn't peel off. Right there. Gonna put this one. I'm not sure I like that area. I'm gonna peel this one off. I'm gonna do what I said I wasn't gonna do because I can't move it clear over here. There we go. So those two are done. The next step is to cut the paint skins around the glass. Hi everyone. All right. Well, I've got some of them cut already. So you can kind of see here that I've got these cut. I've got some squares. Um, I even have it right here shown. This one is um, the ring that I'm going to be doing for wine glasses. I've got a couple of them already done with magnets on them. This is what they'll look like for magnets. 
but I wanted to show you um, what I do once I have them on my sheet, which is my paint skin. Oh, here you go, paint skin. This is, they're dry. The, I made these yesterday, and so they're nice and dry, so I can start cutting them. And uh, it's really up to you how you want to cut them. I use a pair of scissors like this, and then um, I cut them out individually like this because if I try to cut around it, sometimes I cut up underneath, and I don't want to do that. So let me give you an example of how I cut it. I just kind of just allow the glass to kind of turn in my finger and I just cut the piece off. Now you can see that there's some extra right there so I kind of come on the top and I grab that and if you do have some extra on the top just use your fingernail or you know your scissors and just cut around that so and sometimes you can come on the top and scrape it off too as well. So there's this one. Grab. glasses see it better a little bit there that one's got some on the top there that I'll get in a little bit but there's that let me move this out of the way so you can see them so there's that one here I'll do the square one so you can see that just cut straight if you cut this way you'll cut the back and then you'll have glass just um, shown on your magnet so I'm just going to cut around the corners, get it exactly with the glass, and then that's done. So I take the, uh, the circle ones and I just kind of spin them in my hand as I cut. You know, and does this take time? It does. So you know what I do is these ones right here. I was watching football with my husband, and I like football, but I don't necessarily want to watch it all day long, but I like to look up when there's a good play. So I just cut these while we're watching football together. Um, so in these little teeny tiny ones, I'm making for these here. Let me show you one of those just really fast, and then I'm going to show you how I glue these on the backs of my magnets and on my rings here let's see I think I've done done all the sizes for you so I'll just do one more here okay so that's what they look like now let me put my scissors off to the side don't put these back to back like this or they'll be hard to peel so that's why I always have them on paper or I'll have them on paper towels uh, but I never put them back to back, okay? And now the final step is actually gluing the glass to the magnets. And now the magnets, I also buy those in sets. So they come with this, which is the glass piece. And then they also come with these magnetic circle discs. And I know you can probably purchase you know, just these and then purchase the magnetic and cut it out yourself, but it is super fast and super easy, so I don't. I just do it this way. So the cool thing is, is that these just pop out like that. I line it up. Let's do a green one. I line it up finger to finger like that, and I just press down. That's how easy it is. And that magnet is finished. So let me show you a few more. I'll just go ahead and do the green ones. These ones are for my son for Christmas. He's a Green Bay Packer fan, football fan. And if you get it and you peel it out of there beforehand, you just have to take this off the back. So how easy is that, right? All right, so there's those. Let me give you the bigger ones, show you the bigger ones. No, nope, not those ones, these ones. These are the medium size ones, which are typically um, the ones I get are the medium ones. But this time I thought, you know what, I want to get different sizes. Um, and I love the square ones. I may have to do a lot more square ones. Those are 
almost probably going to be my favorites. And the big circles, these ones here, look at those are nice, aren't they? All right, let me grab that one. Put these off to the side. So it makes it just super easy, nice gifts for whoever you're doing Christmas or birthdays for. For me, these are really great for those smaller gifts. Um, I'm doing them all for my kids, but for like stocking stuffer type stuff. Stocking tougher stuffers type stuff. Say that like three times in a row. Anyway, stocking stuffers or um, for coworkers or I'm actually making um, the, a lot of these are going to be for coworkers and for my board of directors. Um, you know, they, they work hard to make sure that our why is um, running really well and they really support me. So I appreciate them. So I want to make sure that I honor them too as well. So I wanted to just do something small for them, but something meaningful, something that I made. And um, yeah, so you can kind of see this is just, it's kind of addicting because it's really fun and you're done. Like I just finished a complete set in this time frame of magnets for my son right there, right? Thanks for joining me today and if you're new to my channel please consider subscribing and clicking that notification bell and if you like this video i bet you're gonna like these as well thanks a lot and have a great day bye bye